God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon, and today we are discussing five things to take a look at to know that you are in the school of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, according to Jesus' words and teaching to the disciples, he is our teacher. John chapter 14 and 26, he clearly tells us that the Holy Spirit not only is our comforter, he's our teacher. So one of the things that behooves every last one of us that is necessary for us to grow as we go in our walk with God is to know the spirit to to have a desire to know his voice his leading his thoughts working in you the temple of god is you and i and the holy spirit dwells in us and as god has wheeled through Christ's death, this is how he leads and teaches us by his spirit. The Bible tells us in Romans that the sons of God, be it male or female, we are led by the spirit. So I want you, my friend, to, to, to hone in on something very important that Jesus told Nicodemus when Nicodemus, the Pharisee that came to Jesus by night, and Jesus told him that he must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. Now, in so with Jesus saying this, this is also what he said. This is John chapter three, verse seven. Let's look at this before I give you these five things I want you to pay attention to that you will know that you are in step with the Spirit. You are in the school of the Spirit teaching you the kingdom of God, which is Christ Jesus. John chapter 3, verse 7, Jesus says this, The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear it but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, when he is speaking, moving, he is unctioning us, he's quickening us, he's teaching us, he is like wind. You cannot see the wind. But when it is moving, you can tell with your eye, with your natural eye, that the wind is on the move because something is moving. The leaves of the trees begin to move, sway back and forth because the wind is upon them. But you and I can't see it. So what we have to endeavor, what, what we have to cultivate and correlate is learning how to gauge the voice of the Spirit because he teaches us through divine inspiration, which comes with information. How do we know this is so? Because Several of the gifts of the Spirit that are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 are revelatory gifts. They are the revealing of information. It is the revealing of the mind of God working through us to speak whether to ourselves or to someone else. It's called the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. This was what Jesus manifested in John chapter four at the well where he was sitting on uh, um, a well, Abraham's well, he was sitting on it tired after being out ministering with the disciples. When the Samaritan woman came, Jesus asked her to go get her husband. And we know that as Jesus said, you don't have five and the man you're with is not your husband. Jesus had a word of knowledge that came by way, quote, of the wind. Follow me. Because friends, if you are focused on the cares of your life and you are not concentrating or consecrating your ear to hear, 
You are not able to remain in the school of the spirit because there is a place deep inside of us, my friends, this unchartered by the chatter of our everyday thoughts. It's your spirit. It's where God dwells. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. This is where the school of the spirit, this is where God deals with us through that deep part, our conscious. This is why your conscious mind cannot be engaged on, on the things of this world, constant current events. In fact, beloved, many people have been deceived by current events. They are so enamored with what's going on with everybody and everything. We know that death and destruction and famine is um, uh, uh, amongst us. We know it's in the land. It will be that way. Jesus already told us what to expect. So one of the deceptions to pull you out of these five things that I'm getting ready to give you, my friend, is becoming pulled into being a busybody. Busybodies are always about other people's business. Destruction, it's, it's always something. In fact, friends, I have done a video before where many YouTubers don't realize they are deceived. Their chat channels and platforms is nothing but gossip and nothing but current events. But the greatest event that we need to stay close to in our heart is the event on Mount Calvary, actually Golgotha, where Jesus hung, died, and we know that that is where our source of strength and power emanates, not so much from the cross, but from his resurrection. Friends, that's what we want to meditate daily to pull the power that is invested in the Christ who sits on the right hand of God. So friends, here's these five things I want you to look at. So you will know that you are in the school of the spirit, that you are being led by the spirit. Number one, you have a love for understanding. You want to understand who God is from Genesis to Revelation, which is the revealing of Jesus. You want to know. God puts it in you to know. The Holy Spirit, when you are born again, just like Jesus told Nicodemus, he said you must be born again. The Holy Spirit is our paracletus. He is our teacher and comforter, and he is going to have it in your heart to want to know who God is. Number two, once you are in the school of the spirit, I can assure you, my friend, you are always walking around with a notebook. You are always taking notes. There is no way that the spirit could be teaching us and you, you can't hold all this information. You're going to find yourself writing things down, copy and pasting. You're going to be, you know, <laughs> looking around. You got stacks of notebooks because you're in school. Even in the natural, you don't go to school without notebooks. When my sons went to school I, and still my youngest, they send us at the beginning of the school year how many notebooks they need. How many pens do you need? Because why? You get ready to learn. And some things you're not going to catch it the first time you hear it. So you write it down so you can go back over it so you can eat it, so to speak. Number three, you are not burdened with worship. Worship is who you are. Praising God, giving him thanksgiving. That is something that is wrought in the believer by the spirit because he knows that we can't give God anything more so than the fruit of our lips because he created us. So worship is not a burden. And I challenge anyone that says that you have the Holy Ghost that you are born again, but you never worship Jesus. You never worship God the Father. You never sing songs of praise in your private time. I'm not saying you have to do this in public, friends, but I'm telling you, if you don't have a song unto the Lord, if this is something that you find laborious, it is very likely you have not the Holy Spirit because Praise and thanksgiving is a natural response when you understand the sufferings of Jesus and the sacrifice of God, which gave us Christ. 
So, so it's not a burden because when you are in the school of the spirit and he's le- he's teaching you and you're learning in between all of your highs and lows, your traumas, your tragedies, your failures, your, your oopsies, your, your you know, <laughs> friends, you need, you need the equalizer worship and thanksgiving to our God. It was uh, David that said it very clear and poignant. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and with praise. Number four, Jesus is on your mind constantly. Friends, listen. I'm 55 years old this year. I met God in a one-bedroom apartment over 30 years ago. I was 21 years old. From that day to the moment I'm sitting here in your ear, I have not one day not thought about Jesus. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is the lover of my soul. He is my bishop. He's my shepherd. He is the King of glory. He is the one that redeemed my soul. And I think about him every day, often all throughout the day. So I submit to you, you will think about Jesus because the Holy Spirit, as Jesus said in John chapter 14 as well, he comes to glorify Jesus. That's the work of the Spirit, to glorify Jesus that men may be saved and discipled by his Spirit. Number five, you gotta tell it. You can't meet this Savior and you don't wanna tell it. I challenge you, my friend, if you don't have a, a overwhelming desire to talk about Jesus Christ, I want you to do as Paul said in Philippians. Examine yourselves. Examine yourself. And be sure you are in the faith. The word tells us to work out our salvation with fear and with trembling. And it is, my friend, because of Jesus, because of his death, he said, I pray to the Father that he will give you the comforter to lead you, to guide you into all truth. And the truth is Jesus. He said, I'm praying that the Father send him. This dispensation right now is of the Spirit. And it behooves each one of us to daily welcome the Holy Spirit, to daily acknowledge his presence. Some things, friends, cannot be taught. It has to be caught. It has to be revealed. It cannot be preached. It cannot be expounded. It has to be experienced. Seek God, love him with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the things that you don't know as you continue to grow in your love for God. He will reveal it to you. You will know. Seek to know the presence of our comforter and our teacher through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Till next time, my friend, God bless.